So it is a myth that Bandler and Grinder studied Ericsson, Satir, and Poles. It didn't happen like that. The master practitioner course here at the NLP Academy has been truly amazing. And what makes that amazing is so many things, but I'll keep it short. The fabulous trainers, the fabulous people on the course, and the fabulous, fabulous, wonderful learnings that... When Bandler and, Bandler and Grinder followed the processes you've done on this course. Now, as I said on day one, when they modelled, just like you did, they become. They went into that know-nothing state and become Ericsson. Oh. This course was absolutely outstanding. It's extraordinarily challenging for me, but that was a good thing because I didn't want to take the easy route because to take the easy route wouldn't make me a very good master practitioner. I wanted to be challenged, I wanted to learn, I wanted to experience new things, all of which I got. Uh, fantastic trainers, unbelievable people, and I leave 13 days later a changed person. So this is the model of modelling. This is what you did, this is what you set out to do. You found your model of excellence. Magicians, jugglers, communicators. You went into the know-nothing state and assimilated that skill. A bit like a child would assimilate a skill. And in assimilating that skill, you then deployed the patterning. All week, you practiced your skill. Sometimes you were there, sometimes you weren't there, and sometimes you realized probably that the way the model did it, there were certain things that were perhaps superfluous to the task. Did any of you get, did you, any of you notice there was noise, excess in your model? Excess being, Bandler and Grinder observed hundreds of things that Ericsson did, but they only coded depending on how you look at it, 31 patterns, some people would say 20. There was a whole load of other stuff there that they chose not to code. A lot of it was noise. A lot of it was around Ericsson's own beliefs. It's beyond words. But genuinely, I felt that um, significant breakthrough. I think what was amazing for me was that um, master practitioner for me put me in an environment where I felt adopted and I felt that the people that had adopted me were both the people who were given the course and who were on the course and they supported me, gave me what I need for that breakthrough and realising that how important breakthrough was and how significant it's going to change my life as I go forward. Deployed the patterning. The NLP co-creators went back to California from Phoenix. Practice, practice, practice so it becomes a part of them. And in doing so, that is the crossover from unconscious uptake, because in deploying it, you then naturally start to go to a higher logical level in the sense of putting the pieces together that works, that doesn't work, that you need and what you don't need. So in that move over from step three to four, there is a beginning of the coding. And then you code in steps. What a beautiful set of code I saw here today. A lot of it's different seminars, and I've had a lot of experience. For me, it was really, really positive and empowering experience. I met a great and amazing bunch of people, had a thoroughly powerful experience, and it was great to see Michael connect so deeply with the group. For me, I just thought, wow. Two steps, um, 15 flip charts, was the detailed code. Um, I don't know how many steps are worth of bread breaking, but rather a lot. And some of you who modeled the same models would notice how the code came out differently. Obviously, you notice that some of you did juggling, some of you did uh, the card shuffling and other types of tasks. The code came out differently because the code is now where you are thinking, how am I going to explain and teach this to other people? What is my experience? And the code for the NLP language patterns was transformational grammar. That's the, and it was totally unrelated to hypnosis. Um, well, arguably, not, not totally unrelated, because obviously hypnosis is linguistic and transformational grammar is linguistic, but there was no 
direct overlaps in the fields. And they use the codes of transformational grammar, the distinctions, to code the meta and Milton model. You use your own personal distinctions and experiences to code the pattern. And then your, how well you coded it depended on how well you taught it. For me, it was taking what we did at Practitioner to the next level. And it was going home every night with a buzz and just really enjoying the experience and thinking, wow, this makes sense to me. I can use this. This is really helping me understand so much more about myself even more. And this week, really challenging, but in a good way, in a really positive way. And, you know, you just find out so much more about yourself that enables you to live a more productive life. So the group today who you modelled and developed and presented to, um, some of them I noticed really, really picked up well from your teaching. Did you notice that? They, some of the people really picked up the task well the way you demonstrated it and taught it. You know, and you cycled then through that presentation process we shared here today. So first of all, where you presented this is, uh, number one, you told a metaphor. Uh, number two, you demonstrated your skill. Number three, you then uh, taught the skill, which was the code. Number four, you gave the opportunity for people to share, experience the code. And number five, you took the experiences then so that other people can generalize it. Nice little formula. Motivate through a metaphor. Uh, demonstrate. Explain stroke teach. Uh, let them crave an experience, then generalize. So really, that's what you did. That's kind of a, a summary uh, as to what you did. That is the difference. NLP modeling, analytic modeling. NLP modeling. Unconscious assimilation first. Analytic modeling, which is what other people in NLP have been doing, is study, then code. This is much richer, I think. Michael Carroll was just phenomenal.